seven reasons why God wants you to be alone. Before we get started, let's go ahead and pray together. Father God, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. We know it's not by accident, incident, or coincidence. It's by the providence of you, Lord God, that you allow this video to show up in front of them. I pray that you will use us and help them to have a full understanding of why you want them alone with you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we love you, we thank you, and we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Use me as your willing vessel today to speak a word to your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Point number one, this is the reason why God wants you to be alone with him. Because see, one-on-one -on -one time is the best. Ain't nothing like some good one-on-one -on -one time. Think about you for an example. You may act different when you're around three, four, five people or when you're at work with 10 people or 15 people. But if someone has a dinner with you one-on-one, -on -one, you act a little different, right? That's because, see, it's intimate. It's an intimate time. You get to know that person better. God wants to pull you away from the world. He wants to pull you away from that TV and he wants you to sit in stillness because, see, you have a purpose and God wants to download things on the inside of you, right? Because see, you can't pour from an empty cup. He wants to He wants to download and, 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 and get close with you so that you can pour out. And now you are a better service to the world and everyone you come in contact with. When people come in contact with you, they can say, wow, I, I can tell that person has been in the presence of God. And that comes from alone time, right? Or one-on-one -on -one time. It's cool to pray, you know, with other people, but ain't nothing like some one-on-one -on -one time with just you and God. I got John right here. I got John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So see, he's telling us that he gives us peace and that only comes from that one-on-one -on -one time. Okay, point number two. The reason why he wants you alone with him is to understand your purpose through Christ. Okay? Your purpose through Christ. Because understand your identity is with divinity. Right? See, you are saved through Christ. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, you are saved through Christ, and he wants you to understand your purpose through Christ. I'm in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's only through Christ that you are connected. All right, let's get to point number three. Feel free to screenshot any of these or take some notes, but uh, I'm gonna be going through them pretty fast. Uh, I wanna get a lot of videos done for y'all. Love you so much, subscribe to the channel, by the way. Point number three, he wants to separate you from the noise. <laughs> Man, listen, it's a lot of noise going on out there. You turn on the news, noise, 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 noise. Ain't nothing like being isolated, right? Where it's just you and God, okay? Psalms chapter 34, verse 14, it says, depart from evil. Depart, that means that, that means leave, that means get away from. Something doesn't feel right on your spirit, get away from it. God's not asking you to, to get in a boxing match <laughs> every day over here without, he's saying, listen, depart from, I got work for you to do. Depart from evil, do good, seek peace and pursue it. Seek peace. What is peace? It's him. Because once again, peace is not something, it's someone. He is peace. You got millionaires, billionaires out here. They may have all the money in the world, but they don't have no peace. That's not to say that a millionaire can't have peace, but I'm saying, you know, peace is through Christ. I believe in Matthew uh, chapter 6, I believe it's verse uh, 33. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That means God will supply you with everything that you need when you seek him first. Everything. That's your time, talent, your gifts, your possession, your money, everything. He is your supplier. God is your source. Everything else is resources. God is running everything, right? He's running the show, all right? Let's get to uh, point number four. He wants you to know that that one-on-one -on -one time with him is so that you can receive power. Now, I know what you're thinking, power, like you're going to get some muscles, all right? I ain't talking about that kind of power, right? Because this ain't got nothing to do with you. This got everything to do with the Holy Spirit. Because, see, Christ can flow through you. I'm in Romans chapter 15, verse uh, 13, right? It says, now the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace and believing that ye may abound. Abound, like live that, like. If I took a nap in here, if I lived in a truck, like you'd be like, he, he abound in the truck. He, he live in the truck. 
You know what I mean? Till I needed a little bit of air, then I cracked the window. But you get what I'm saying? It says abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Man, that's so powerful. To understand that you got the power of the Holy Ghost. You got the power of the Holy Spirit. That means God wants to flow through you. That means God can use you to lay hands on somebody and they'll be healed. That's not because of something you did. It's not like, hey, his t-shirt is super white, use him. No, I didn't qualify for that, right? Nothing I did to earn it. See, it's not something you earn, it's someone you learn. Who is that? That's Jesus Christ. He wants to flow through you. You're not trying to do all these works to earn things. No, no. Anybody, listen, anybody can receive him in his spirit. All he wants you to do to, is call on him. The Bible also says in, in Romans, it says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Does that mean me? Yeah, it means you. Many people say, man, I need to get my life right before I come to Christ. No, because you may not have enough time to get your life. You can't get your own self together, as a matter of fact. Don't wait till you clean to come to Christ. He is the cleansing process. He is the bar of soap. He is everything you need. You can't get yourself together without him. You understand? Point number five, the reason why he wants you alone to, is to give you that renewed mind. I didn't write the exact scripture down, but it's in Romans. I believe Romans, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse one and two. It says, I, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you, that you present your body uh, a living sacrifice unto God, right? which is your reasonable service. Then it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right. He wants to renew your mind through him. Now, you may ask yourself, how do I renew my mind? Right. You renewing your mind to the mind of Christ, because the more time you spend with him, the more you become like him, the more you talk like him. The more you smell like him, it's by way of relationship. Spend time with him. Whatever you spend time with, it rubs off on you. If I spend time with a little puppy that's been running around outside in the rain and getting dirty or whatever, I'm going to start to smell like the puppy. When I walk in the store, they're going to say, man, that guy smells just like a puppy. And sure enough, if you trace, if you, if you trace it all the way back, They'll be like, you know what? I did see him out there rolling around with that puppy 30 minutes ago in the grass, you know, throwing a tennis ball. It all makes sense. What are you surrounding yourself with? God wants uh, wants you to surround yourself, man, with him. All right. Number six. Oh, hold on. I ain't give you the scripture with that. Hold on. Let's go back to number five. Number five, I had Philippians chapter four. Ver well, I gave you Romans 12. Romans 12, 1 and 12, 2. But I'm going to give you Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, which I also have for that. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. All right? Remember, we're talking about the mind. Okay? And then the other scripture, Romans 12, 1, 12, 2, I talk about the renewing of the mind. So you got to unlearn some stuff of the world and relearn what really matters. All right, check it out. I'm in number six. He wants to make that a long time contagious so that you'll keep coming back. It's like a cookie shop. Man, look, you you take a bite into the right chocolate chip cookie from that cookie shop, man, you'll be back. You see what I'm saying? Why is that? Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in him. In other words, God saying he will keep you in perfect peace as long as your mind is on him. So that alone time that you spend with God, when you and then when you go to work or you do your errands or whatever you got to do throughout the day, you, your mind on him, he keeps you in peace because he is peace. When you're thinking about him, he gives you that peace. And you say, man, I can't, I can't wait to spend, spend some more time with God. That don't mean you have to wait till you get home and go in the room or whatever. You can just, you can pray, you can talk to God throughout the day. He's always with you. All right. My next point. He wants you to know that peace is not something, it's someone. Many people try to chase peace. They're looking for peace, peace. peace. And they're, they're looking they're, they're looking to everything in the world. They're trying to get it with a certain amount of money. With, with a, uh, uh, they, they, they want a tag to put on their shirt. They want a certain position. They want respect. They want this. They want this. Then they get it backwards. They say, okay, power, money, respect. Oh, no, no, hold on. Money, respect, power. They go through all these world uh, worldly things trying to climb a ladder according to the world's way and it never truly fulfills them 
but it's only Christ who can fulfill you. Peace is not something, it's someone. So you can skip all that stuff and just pursue Christ and then you fulfill. And I told you, Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33, I believe, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all this righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. That means God, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, he going to add to you, man. He going even add a water bottle and give you something to drink, man. God going to give you everything, man. All right? God going to give you everything. John uh, chapter 16, verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. All right, another translation say, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have already overcame the world. So listen, what he's telling you, hey, I know we got this a long time, but I want to let you know something. When you go out here in the world, you're going to see some trouble. But be of good cheer. I've already overcame the world. So he's telling you, look, hey, put a smile in your face. You, you, you want to counter something, but understand deep down in your spirit, I've already overcame the world. And through my spirit, I'm giving you power to go out here and make a difference. But you got to rely on me. You got to rely on him. Those are seven reasons why God wants you to be alone with him. I love you all so much. Be sure to subscribe. I upload daily. I love you and I'll see you in the very next video.